Hi all, my name is Asit Beg. I'm a technical account manager at AWS and I'm based out of Bangalore, India. Welcome to AWS Supports You, where AWS support experts provide tips to optimize performance in the cloud, lower costs, and provide you with best practices and design considerations. Joining me today is Abhishek and Harsh from AWS Support. Can you give us a quick introduction, Abhishek and Harsh? Uh, thank you, Asad. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Abhishek Soni. I'm a senior solutions architect at AWS, and I'm based out of Delhi, India. Uh, my name is Harsh Sheda. I am a technical account manager working in global segment, and I'm based out of Bangalore, India. Thank you, Abhishek and Harsh. So today we will be talking about reducing costs with EMR serverless design patterns. We will specifically focus on the EMR serverless of the AWS services. Now, before we get into the details, a quick note to all the attendees online. Use the chat window on the right-hand side of your screen to let us know where you're joining us from today and do share your thoughts and questions throughout the episode. We look forward to hearing from you. We will also provide a link to our survey. So if you'd like to let us know how we did, please click the link and share your feedback. So Abhishek, can you help us, uh, can you walk us through uh, about what we are going to be talking today? Sure, thank you. So uh, we'll begin by talking what was our motivation behind building EMR serverless. Uh, we'll then uh, get a bit more technical talk about uh, how it works under the hood. Uh, we'll discuss about different components uh, which make up EMR serverless. What are the core concepts or fundamentals behind it? We'll then uh, talk about how uh, all these come together to provide us the key benefits and advantages that we want out of EMR serverless. We'll then uh, discuss about the applicable use cases or usage patterns uh, in practicality for uh, different scenarios. We'll uh, then discuss about the pricing uh, as we wrap up and come towards the end of the session and end it up with question and answers. Uh, having mentioned or talked about the agenda, let me uh, start with the session. So before we start with EMR serverless, let's spend a minute on this slide. Our customers have been using purpose-built analytics services to solve various big data use cases, either by storing or processing the data that is optimized for the particular use case. By choosing the right tool for the right job, they don't have to compromise performance over functionality. So it's about using the purpose-built services, which uh, provides you the advantage to solve the problem at hand with the most apt service. Each of the analytic services on the last slide is optimized to give you the best performance and cost for each analytics job at hand. Some customers want all these benefits without having to touch any infrastructure and uh, save their efforts and cost in managing that infrastructure. So we have been hard at work making these serverless. Uh, as you know, at AWS, we believe in the philosophy of working backwards from the customer requirements. So based on the feedback we have got from the field, we um, converted or made a lot of these services and uh, came up with serverless offerings as well for them. As you would see, we have a uh, Redshift uh, serverless in warehousing space in addition to Redshift, which already has been there. We also have EMR serverless now, uh, which has been uh, available for a while uh, for big data processing in addition to other serverless offerings. As you see on this slide, AWS now has the most serverless options for data analytics in the cloud. We have a serverless option to make it easy for our customers to do what they do best. Uh, they should, as the customers, focus on the application and let them handle, uh, let us handle the rest in the background. As we deep dive into EMR serverless, we'll see EMR serverless's advantages, such as how uh, simple it is to use, how easy it is to use, and how it is 2x faster than a standard open source. We'll also uh, see how cost beneficial it is and how comprehensive it is as it integrates with the open source tools which already exist and uh, the newer ones as well. Having talked about uh, what is the motivation behind EMR serverless uh, uh, design release, let's 
uh, get going and talk about how it works under the hood what you see currently on the slide is a, a pool of workers and shortly you will see how it all comes together to provide you uh, you know with the working of ems serverless so let's dive deeper so we'll have an admin user who will create an emr serverless application post creation of the application users can submit emr or hive jobs the job submission can happen uh, using any of the tools where you could use apache airflow managed apache airflow a step function any custom orchestrator you might already be using or any pipeline uh, manager that you may already have in your environment post submission emr serverless automatically provisions workers in the emr service account and then these workers will reach out the resources in the customer vpc and uh, they will reach out uh, to the resources in the customer vpc to communicate with the relevant services for example let's say if you are using glue catalog with emr it they will reach out or communicate with glue if you are using rds instance for your hive meta store uh then they will communicate with rds if you are retrieving any passwords or secrets then they would reach out to secrets manager uh when using encryption they will communicate with kms uh and of course uh, s3 for input and output data so uh, you see how uh, you know you create an application and how everything comes together uh, and as a user you only submit the application and everything else is taken care by the emr service itself so i'm talked about some of the concepts like uh, jobs application workers uh, on the last slide let's see uh, what i mean by uh, all of these uh, let's talk about application first with emr serverless you can create one or more applications that use open source analytics frameworks to create an application you specify the open source framework that you want to use for example you could uh, use apache spark or apache hive that's the one component then uh, you uh, configure the emr release for the open source framework version for example in this case it could be emr release 6.4 that uh, corresponds to apache spark 3.1.2 that's the second component in the application and third primary component is the name of your application so any name of your choosing at this point uh, some of our listeners might be thinking uh, you know uh, when do i create one application or more than one application so let me talk about some examples right when should you create multiple applications one scenario would be uh, when you want to use a different open source framework for example uh, you know you want to use hive uh, in one place and spark in the other uh, another uh, scenario may be you want to use different versions of the open source framework uh, for uh, different applicable use cases it could be a newer version of spark for a new application and you do not want to upgrade the older application yet then you would want to have simultaneously two versions of the application another example would be uh, if you are performing ab testing when upgrading uh, from one version to another for example you are migrating from spark 2.4 to spark 3.1 uh, you would want to maintain two applications one more example i would like to quote is when you uh, want to separate a, a logical environments uh, for example you want to have a test and production uh, scenarios uh, you may want to have two different applications another extension of it would be when you want to uh, have different lobs uh, do uh, or use two different uh, application versions one customer example i can think of here where our technical account manager or enterprise support team uh, used uh, emr serverless or helped our customer adopt emr serverless to their advantage is our customer had this uh, you know scenario where they had increased operational overhead and uh, also the cluster was running all the time that was because they had a shared cluster environment where different teams were submitting different jobs at uh, ad hoc intervals and randomly and uh, our team was having tough time uh, managing the cluster because uh, the nature of the jobs was such that uh, they were ad hoc in nature the duration was not well defined 
some jobs would run for very long time some would be very short uh, there was problem with the versioning uh, some jobs uh, would use some version some other jobs would use some version of the framework so all this was causing lot of operational overhead and also the cluster was running almost all the time so our uh, enterprise support team did a deep dive they uh, also enabled the customer on emr serverless and later on because it made lot of sense both from a uh, performance and cost point of view our customer adopted emr serverless so what are the other components apart from application uh, of course one is job a job is a request submitted to any emr serverless application that is asynchronously run and tracked through completion so it is similar to what you do with uh, uh, any other emr right now you can run multiple jobs concurrently in an application so that's also a possibility if you have one application you can submit multiple jobs and they would run simultaneously uh, workers uh, an emr serverless application uh, internally uses workers to run your jobs by default each application uses workers with four virtual cpu and 20 gb of local storage which is allocated per worker uh, this is configurable and you can customize you can increase the storage size and all then we also have a concept of pre initialized workers in emr emr serverless uh, emr serverless provides an optional feature to pre initialize the workers when your application starts up uh, it may need uh, workers immediately it may be latency sensitive application so with a uh, pre initialized workers uh, they the application need not wait the workers are uh, al already ready to process the request immediately when the job is submitted to the application pre initialized workers allow you to maintain a warm pool of workers for the application so that it can provide a sub second response to uh, any request that come to it for processing i hope pre initialized workers uh, make sense here uh, to you because you want to have that warm pool sometimes for interactive applications i'll take a pause here and uh, wanted to check uh, asad any questions uh, so far um yes abhi said so uh, i would just like to know uh, what open source uh, frameworks does emr serverless support at the moment so currently hive and spark frameworks are uh, the supported frameworks in emr serverless okay so that i think was a question from the audience so i hope uh, that answers the question um and at the moment i do not see any further questions abhishek so maybe i'll let you continue thank you so uh, how does it all uh, help us right for our business use cases how uh, can we uh, you know keep using emr serverless and take more advantage of it so i have tried to categorize uh, the advantages uh, on this slide uh, let me talk about some it's simple to use of course right because it provides a simpler experience uh, with emr serverless you need not uh, worry about uh, configuring optimizing operating or securing your uh, emr cluster you don't need to worry about instance types or cluster sizes or about uh, applying any os patches all that is managed by the emr service itself with the emr serverless option you all you need to do is specify the framework and the version that you want to use for your application and submit your uh, data processing jobs and that's it rest is taken care by the emr emr serverless uh, it is uh, inherently resilient to uh, availability zone failures so emr serverless is a regional service uh, jobs uh, is run in single az to avoid any performance implications of network traffic across az's however in rare case of an az being impaired a job submitted to your emr serverless application is automatically run in a different az and all this happens transparently to the user you need not get guest cluster sizes anymore uh, it eliminates the need to right size the clusters for varying jobs and data sizes uh, with emr serverless you create an application using an open source framework version and submit jobs to the application emr serverless automatically adds and removes workers at different stages of processing your job as a result you don't have to reconfigure uh, when data volume change 
you only pay for what your jobs require you can control cost by specifying the minimum and maximum number of concurrent workers and the virtual cpu and memory per worker also you get to retain the performance of amr's optimized runtime and open source cur currencies also what you get we uh, you know update uh, amr versions uh, within 60 days of any open source releases A amr serverless includes the amazon emr's performance optimized runtime for apache spark and hive the emr uh, it is also api compatible and it is over twice as fast as a standard open source so your jobs run much faster and you incur less compute costs at the same time we also provide the same emr releases uh, for applications uh, whether you are using uh, emr cluster uh, on ec2 you are using emr on eks or emr serverless so when you build an application using an emr release for example you built a job using amazon emr release you can choose to run it in any of the deployment models you could run it either in an emr cluster on ec2 emr on eks uh, emr serverless without having to rewrite the application you need not make any changes to your application just because you are changing the deployment option so what the major advantage is pro it provides you is like you can build applications for a given framework version and retain the flexibility to change the deployment model based on the future operational need so at some point in time if something changes you no, no longer let's say want to use emr on eks and you want to switch to emr serverless you can do it uh, all the ease in the world from security point of view uh, you can pass an iam role with every job to specify what it has access to so it helps you simplifies this authorization for multiple tenants with per job execution role uh, any permissions authorization needed for the job execution only that can be granted to a particular job with the iam role associated with it let's talk about interactive applications there are a lot of applications and uh, situations where your data scientists or your data analysts and some of the other team members might be running interactive sql queries uh, it could be for immediate need of data exploration Uh, or any other let's say some critical report being generated a uh, lot of times uh, you want a subsequent response time or you want a very fast response in such cases uh, we provide you with pre initialized pool of workers as i also discussed earlier and uh, you can start your emr serverless application and pre initialize the pool of workers and as soon as a user starts a job those workers help process that request of the interactive application or interactive requirement that sums up uh, some of the uh, salient benefits of using emr serverless uh, i would now like to pass on to uh, harsh who will walk us through the common usage patterns or use cases of emr serverless thank you abhishek uh thank you abhishek for giving an idea about like emr overview emr serverless overview and advantages of it so we will uh, cover basic usage patterns uh, so the first pattern here is data pipelines right so data pipelines are the backbone of your analytics workloads right so the common a common pattern with data pipeline is to start a cluster run a job and stop the cluster when the job is complete because data is separated from compute the input and output for each job are persisted separately from the cluster for example it can be in s3 like amazon s3 as well so these steps are frequently automated using workflow orchestration applications such as apache workflow you can also use aws services such as aws step functions or managed workflows for apache airflow so uh, to create these kind of workflows as such so although automating these steps is in complex data engineers have to spend time determining appropriate ec2 instance types or the cluster size they have to determine the failover mechanism or determine the availability zone in which they have to launch a cluster so like they have to and the other part is they have to test their application when adopting an os update as well right so uh, when data sizes changes over time they have to resize the clusters or use features like emr manage scaling that automatically resize the cluster but with emr serverless emr serverless provides a simpler solution here 
right? By eliminating the need for you to handle these scenarios. You simply choose the open source framework and version for your application and submit the job. So you don't have to worry about instance selection, cluster sizes, cluster startup, resize, or any failover uh, overhead or something, or also with regards to any OS updates. So we will try to see how uh, a basic sample of a, a data pipeline runs. So if you see here, we have various steps in our data pipeline or our pipeline. So step A requires three workers, for example. So it, the job is submitted to EMR application. And you can see like the EMR serverless application basically will, be prov will provision the three workers as required in step A. So if we move to the other phase that are two parallel steps are being submitted here. So uh, step, we have step B and C that could be running concurrently here. So EMR serverless again provisions number of workers for each steps and runs the steps in parallel. So here if eight workers are required by B, so you, you can see like the eight workers are given to uh, be as such from the EMR serverless. So uh, how many how much of resources are required is what is being provisioned by EMR serverless. Similarly, in my pipeline in the end state, like if the step D requires, if the job that has been running in this step requires 10 workers, so EMR serverless application will launch or execute these jobs on 10 workers as only. So um, only point of saying here is whenever my uh, job comes in, so the amount of resources required is what EMR serverless will provision. So this is where you have you save cost as well, and also like whenever you want uh, like uh, your operational overhead is also reduced. So eventually, if you see in this slide, your workers are decommissioned now. So as soon as like my pipeline finishes, so your workers are going to be decommissioned. So there is no. Uh, long running cluster that you used to do. So now you can have EMR serverless where you can just like your uh, resources can just go if they are idle or if they are not in use, they will be decommissioned. Coming to the another pattern that is the shared cluster, as Abhishek also mentioned, like in one of his use cases. So with shared cluster, like it's it's like uh, the teams use shared long running clusters to run multiple jobs. So in this case, if you see like the engineers like implement queues in Apache Yarn for different workloads on a common cluster. So queues are maintained and it's an operational overhead as such, right? So on-premise clusters use multi-tenant jobs on single clusters. So the operation overhead is with regards to YAN and they manage the resources across the cluster. Similarly, when it comes to EMR on EC2, so there is auto scaling that comes uh, comes into the picture. Like for example, there are multiple jobs coming in on a shared cluster. So auto scaling takes care of scaling up and down depending on the workload. But yeah. So similarly, when, when we come to the EMR serverless part, so eventually uh, when uh, when we are comparing to the EMR, uh, e EMR on EC2 or uh, on on-premise as well, so when it comes to EMR serverless, so as we discussed, so pipeline submits the job to single EMR serverless application and each and every job is like uh, what, what they, whatever uh, like uh, workers are assigned to that job is only the required amount of workers. So as we mentioned, like so your job get the resources that they need. Moreover, because you only pay for the workers that your job requires. So you don't incur, you don't incur costs for over provision resources. And to like extend this functionality in case like uh, with regards to security or IAM policies. So because each job can uh, specify the IAM role that should be used to access AWS resources when the job when the uh, job is running as such. So you don't have to like set up complex configurations or you don't have to manage the queues or the permissions as well. So if you see on the screen, uh, for example, a data engineer submits job A. So we can have a role A as such, like we can have a role associated with each and every job. So role A is associated with job A. So you can see the permissions are fine grained. So whatever permissions that are required by this uh, job, uh, uh, whatever resources that are required by this job are the only permissions that we give to the role that is associated to this job that is called as execution role. So if you see like, for example, S3 bucket A or like a Redshift cluster and the CloudWatch log group A. So these are the only resources that will be accessed, we can say by the 
job that you are going to run. So the workers will be using the execution role. Debugging these jobs are also very simple as such with regards to when you uh, try to do debugging on an EMR on EC2 or you try to debug uh, like on on-premise as well. So you have your UIs as well, right? So within EMR serverless as well, uh, the logs are generated and they are submitted to S3. That is sim super simple to access. And then you can launch Spark UI for Spark jobs, or you can launch test UI for Hive jobs as well, so that you can like track the real-time progress of your live jobs. So that is also a possibility with EMR serverless. Also, another thing is with regards to uh, what happens when my jobs are completed. So you can also launch Spark history server and also test UI for Hives even after your jobs are completed. So that is where you can also try to like analyze your jobs. The third pattern uh, that comes in, like of use, is when the teams keep a cluster of instances available, right? So to support interactive analysis. So in this case, the cluster is set up and initialized with applications that wait for interactive user requests. Applications are pre-initialized so that they can immediately start processing user requests and provide an interactive user experience. So that is what Abhishek also mentioned, right? Like uh, how uh, pre-initialized workers is one of the major features when it comes to EMR serverless, right? So uh, to, uh, you can say, serve user requests that are ad hoc, that requires low latency stuff as well. So EMR serverless enables this scenario without requiring you to manage clusters. You can specify the number of workers that you want to pre-initialize when you start an EMR serverless application. So subsequently, when user submits the request, the pre-initialized workers can be used to immediately process the user request. So EMR serverless, like for example, if the uh, processing requires more workers, right? So eventually, EMR serverless will automatically also add the required number of extra workers as well. So that we'll see in coming slides. So. Uh, the major point that I wanted to like, we wanted basically to come forward with is with regards to the, you have, uh, you can control when the pre-initialized workers can start by like uh, controlling the start and stop of your EMR serverless application. So for example, you can start your application when, your use, when the user begins the interactive analysis and turn it off when there are no user requests and the application remains idle. So as we discussed, like so, workers are ready to receive the workload. So as as we see on the screen, initial capacity that is the pre-initialized capacity. So we have kept as ten. So ten workers are basically already ready for the uh, like for accepting the user requests or the job, so that they can process as fast as possible. So if three workers are required for a job that comes in. It immediately basically uh, serves these requests as your warm pool, we can say, is already ready with these uh, resources. So they are state, state they are ready in ready state to run basically to accept your request. If another another job comes in, so it requires seven workers. So as you can see, the remaining seven workers, which are pre-initialized, they will be used first. Now, as I mentioned, that EMR serverless can automatically, you can say, provision more capacity if we if we pass on from the initialized capacity as well. So, for example, here we require five more workers. So, for for job C, so if you see here, like EMR serverless will automatically provision another five workers. Now, here these are apart from the pre-initialized workers. So now when, when my all the jobs are finished, so you see the extra five workers are the one that will be decommissioned as fast as possible because these were the extra workers. So the, but the pre-initialized one that we configured, pre-configured as 10, so that will always be there in ready state to run. And till when it will be then, uh, it will be running basically. So as we discussed, so if we want to stop like these workers, so we if, as soon as we stop the application, so if it is in idle state or something, so we can configure that so that your application can be stopped if it is in idle state or something. So eventually all your workers will go into stop state. So you don't have to mark, uh, have uh, like an EMR cluster running all the time, for example, so, to, so that your ad hoc request can be uh, uh, 
ad hoc requests can be served all the time as such, right? So basically, um, uh, your costs are saved with regards to not having an operational overhead when managing EMR on EC2. So manage the, uh, you can say, the scale-up, scale-down configurations, for example, or on, on premise as well when you try to uh, configure the auto-scaling part or you use your YARN configuration or something. So all these overheads are kind of like nullified as such with com when it comes to EMR serverless. <clears throat> yeah so uh just to uh, end about like uh, the patterns and just to end on the uh, possibility of how to um basically uh how to monitor uh these things right how to monitor the jobs or how to monitor the application as well so emr serverless provides the basic monitoring as well so you uh first of all every logs are submitted to s3 or as such so you can also change your s3 bucket uh, you can also have your own personalized S3 bucket. And the major part here is application level monitoring and job level monitoring. So this is where uh, you can say like, um, where EMR serverless is more fruitful when you have to analyze your EMR serverless performance as well. So uh, any any questions or something, Asad, as of now, just to take a halt. Um, yes, Harsh. Uh, so one question uh, from the audience while Abhishek was speaking um, was, uh, you know, they feel um, that there is a lot of overlap between Glue and Athena compared to, you know, what you two have been speaking. So Abhishek, would you like to take that? Yeah, sure. Uh, am I audible? Yes, please. Please go ahead. Yeah, sure. So uh, Glue is an ETL service, uh, again, serverless option from uh, Amazon. While uh, Athena is a query service where we store our data in S3 and we can query that data directly uh, from S3 uh, using Athena. Glue, in fact, is the catalog service uh, which sometimes hold the metadata. We use it with Athena as well for holding the metadata information or the catalog information for Athena. So uh, different services and serve different purposes. What I would like to add is if some people may find that uh, Glue and EMR serverless uh, are uh, quite similar and uh, they uh, may overlap a bit. Uh, again, uh, ETL can be done with both. Uh, Glue on one hand is simple, scalable serverless data integration tool uh, from AWS. Uh, it does things like a metadata repository, automatic schema discovery, and so on. If we focus only uh, on the processing feature and discard uh, glue specific features, uh, let's say things like schema discovery, code generation, then uh, EMR server less and glue services will look almost identical. However, one of the advantages of both the services is they run uh, a Spark and Hive. Okay. And one advantage I would say, uh, you know, EMR serverless uh, has is it is, uh, you know, uh, it's a new deployment option of Amazon EMR, and uh, you don't need to uh, configure, optimize, or protect, or do anything with EMR serverless uh, from the management point of view. In Glue, also, you decide the max capacity, max workers, and all. Uh, typically, you run either uh, of those, right? And uh, uh, with EMR serverless automatically identifies these resources and uh, there are applications which require uh, sub-second uh, response time uh, for uh, that we have a pre warm uh, pool of workers as well and again if you uh, you know uh, go a bit more abstract and then compare glue and EMR uh, EMR on one hand uh, gives you the freedom of uh, communicating a lot with open source world glue on the uh, other hand, uh, works perfectly for more cohesive pipeline uh, uh, with use of AWS services. Yeah. Yeah, I think that should uh, take care of that question. Yes, yes, Abhishek. Thank you, thank you. Um, and coming back to um, uh, the pre-initialized pre pool of workers part that you were talking about, Harsh, uh, in, I think, pattern three. Um, I was just curious to understand uh, when should I really create an application with, you know, let's say pre-initialized pool of workers? I can take that. 
so uh, typically uh, whenever you have any interactive use case or if you are looking for a latency sensitive application you should go for a pre initialized pool of workers without pre initialized pool of workers it typically takes up to 120 seconds for the uh, when you uh, create the application and submit the job it takes uh, typically up to 120 seconds for uh, resources to be spun up and start processing but if you have a requirement where uh, nature of your job is uh, latency sensitive then you should go for pre initialized workers because then you are looking at sub second latency rather than up to 120 seconds perfect perfect thanks for answering that abhishek um i think i'm also really curious to understand uh, you know how monitoring works maybe what are the different uh, available metrics as well uh, when it comes to monitoring i believe uh, harsh you're going to talk about that right now yeah uh, so uh, with regards to monitoring as uh, i mentioned like we have application level monitoring and we also have job level monitoring so coming to application level monitoring so we can track uh, i will spell some uh, matrices that are available which are fine grained for example we can track the running worker counts we can track the cpu I, cpu allocated or the memory allocated as well when it comes to application for that particular time range so it's to, uh, like it's that fine grained that you can monitor on application level you can also see idle worker count or you can see total worker count or something so you can get to know the performance or you can see say how your um, application is behaving at that time and coming to job as i mentioned so at job level as we just saw like how super simple it is to debug is you can have spark uh, history server spark ui or test ui as well so these are the basically monitoring uh, you can say features or that is one we can integrate with the ms serverless perfect uh, thanks arsh uh, over to you uh, over is continuing the presentation Yeah. Uh, so coming to the pricing part, uh, Abhishek, uh, can you explain yeah. in detail as well? Sure. sure. Thank you. So uh, uh, thank you, Arsh, for taking us through different use cases and pipelines. Uh, uh, coming to the most uh, asked question, right? Uh, that worries our customers more. What am I paying for it? So I would like to uh, depict this through uh, this slide. If you look at this slide. this slide demonstrates how a uh, fine grained scaling a very uh, important or significant feature of emr serverless helps to save costs for example your job may require 10 workers as we show in this slide for the first 10 minutes of processing the job and then let's say you need 40 workers for the next 10 minutes and 5 workers for the last 5 minutes what happens here with fine grained scaling uh, or fine grained automatic scaling in built in emr serverless you only uh, incur cost for 10 workers for the first 10 minutes 40 workers for the next 10 minutes as uh, those that's the number of workers required and five uh, workers for the last 5 minutes of the job uh, the workers uh, uh, you know the scaled up amount of workers is not running all the time it is you know the fine grained scaling which takes care of a scale up and a scale down throughout the execution of the job okay so emr serverless automatically scales up workers at each stage of processing your job and it scales them down when they are not required and uh, because you are only paying for uh, virtual cpu memory storage resources aggregated uh throughout the job you end up paying for only what you are using at a particular instance of time okay and this number is rounded up uh, to the nearest second with 1 minute minimum uh, build time uh, i believe it is worthwhile also to uh, talk about uh, uh, one of the customer use cases who had a, a similar thing where uh, they they were uh, onboarding a new workload and with this new workload the timing or the duration of the jobs was not defined and they were initially trying to use uh, ec2 uh, configure those ec2s uh, provision the capacity but uh, the scale in or scale, uh, the scale down or scale up was wasn't always happening in time they had resource resources not always fully utilized so cost was a concern uh in this scenario and uh, also uh, they needed for some of the critical reports needed by the leadership 
they needed interactive uh, uh, response as well so uh, our technical account managers uh, did a deep dive uh, in their uh, during this cost saving exercise and realized that amr serverless could be a best fit for this kind of problem because this was a new workload where they were still trying to uh, get to terms with the nature of the queries and the jobs being submitted so with adoption of emr serverless uh, post one month we uh, ended up saving close to 27% in terms of cost for this particular customer and uh, we expect to see a uh, more impact in upcoming months having spoken about pricing uh, with an example right i would quickly want to uh, want you to take a look at this slide the key takeaway here is you have all these deployment options available and you can, you can choose the uh, whatever suits you best right that's our purpose but some of the things you might want to consider uh, as you know the salient points or pertinent points when you're making a choice is like what are the uh, supported frameworks uh, because emr serverless currently supports spark and hive then uh, how am i being charged from from pricing point of view in emr serverless we charge you basis the resource consumption consumption virtual cpu memory storage etc whereas in emr serverless uh, sorry emr on ec2 or uh, eks we are charging for instance type uh, uh, and then in eks we are charging you for uh, vcpu and memory used again uh, how can you allocate cost let's say if you have different lobs how do you allocate cost to them how do you segregate cost between them uh with emr uh, on ec2 you do it uh, per cluster with uh, emr on eks it is per application uh with emr on serverless you can even uh, go to next level and do it even on job basis as well so those are few takeaways i would like you to have from this slide and uh, you know this is again available in our documentation so you can refer the documentation as well for this moving on we really do want you to be spoiled for choice in the sense we want that you are always able to choose the best tool for the job uh, whatever is the requirement of your application you should be able to use exactly the same service or same deployment option which suits your needs so as i mentioned and as you you would have seen by now we provide different deployment options uh, with emr and uh, you can run applications to fit varied needs uh, such as emr clusters on uh, ec2 on eks or outpost or serverless uh, emr on amazon ec2 clusters is suitable for customers uh, who need maximum control and flexibility over how to run their application because uh, you can choose the ec2 instance type uh, let's say if you want to enhance the performance of a certain workload you choose a particular instance type you can customize the amazon machine image per your needs you can choose the instance configuration uh, you can uh, extend the open source frameworks and install additional custom software as well on cluster instances uh, so those are the uh, points you should consider when you want to use emr on ec2 uh, when moving to emr on eks it is typically suitable for customers who want to standardize on e eks to manage clusters across applications or use different versions uh, of an open source framework on the same cluster emr on outpost uh, is suitable for customers who want to run emr closer to their data center uh, uh, and then they would use outpost emr serverless is suitable for customers who want to avoid managing and operating clusters and simply want to run applications using open source source frameworks like uh, hive and spark so you get rid of all the uh, management overhead or admin overhead uh, that was associated or with let's say emr on ec2 uh, where you control things at a finer uh, level uh, from pricing point of view uh, again uh, right uh, with emr serverless this is our typical observation right and uh, you can use something called uh, emr serverless estimator when you want to switch what our typical uh, observation has been if your total cluster utilization when using emr on ec2 is less than 70% and you are using, using on demand instances you can switch to emr serverless to save costs uh, 
let's say you are using savings plan or reserved instances and your total cluster utilization is less than 50 percent then again you can uh, look at emr serverless as an option uh, and if you're using spot instances typically what we have seen is those are uh, more cost effective options as compared to emr serverless again these are general uh, observations uh, the savings uh, and other things may differ from one environment to another we very strongly recommend to use emr serverless estimator to reach a conclusion or uh, do tests or poc in your environment to determine the same you can always take help from uh, your enterprise support team or the technical technical account manager to help you reach a conclusion we'll uh, now move to our demo where we would uh, be you know showing some of the basic operations in emr serverless so over to you harsh Hey, uh, thanks, Abhishek. So uh, here we will uh, have a small demo, like how to submit jobs as such. So there are various ways in which we can submit, but we'll try to see like how we can submit by console or something. So from the EMR serverless page, you can just click on serverless on the left panel if we are new to it. And you can, uh, here we'll try to uh, submit via EMR Studio. So here you click on EMR Studio. If I'm currently new, I haven't, uh, you can say created an application as such. Any one of the application is where. So it will take you to create, uh, first of all, create an application here. So the basic requirements of this application you see here are the um, the EMR application that we discussed, right? The frameworks that you can uh, build your applications on, where you submit the jobs. So you just name your application. Here we are naming it as EMR, my first serverless application. And then uh, you can select the type of your application or framework you can see like hive or spark that is what it's supported as of now and also release version of emr so now this is where you can choose like for example 6.8 or 6.7 has spark uh, <clears throat> uh 3.2 or spark 3.1 or something so uh you can choose according to your usage or your job that requires that particular version and then coming to this part like choosing the application setup so you can choose default settings uh where you can basically get the uh you can say the pre-initialized workers you can get the uh pre-initialized capacity of uh, like predefined by the default setting as such if you don't want to configure as well so there are two options you can customize your settings or you can use default ones so if you see like one driver or two spark executors are there so i, I have chosen spark as my framework here so this is with relates to spark so you will see the configurations the default configuration that you have the limits till which uh, your EMR serverless will reach to scale as well. So everything is by default. And this is configurable when it comes to custom settings, as you can see here. So coming to the point, like after choosing these basic settings that we discussed, is where we will create the application. Oh, sorry. My... So here, as soon as we create the application, uh, you will see the uh, this thing like the application is created. And also, uh, you will see an application ID. So I'm just noting down the application ID here is because uh, like I will use it in CLI, for example. So I will show you in coming seconds. So after selecting the application, you see here how to submit a job. So within few clicks, you create your application and within next one or two clicks itself, you just have to submit the job. So what all things are required when we want to submit a job as such? So we are going to submit a very basic job here. For example, a word count job, for example, just to show you uh, this, like that what, like you can say, minimal inputs are required to submit a job uh, to EMR serverless. So we select the IM role that we discussed, the execution role where we all uh, we include the permissions that are required. For example, here I require S3. So I will give the S3 permissions here. Eventually, you will also have to basically um, provide the S3 location of where your jar is jar in the sense where your application logic is or where your python code is for example so you have to specify that python uh, like url as such if you see on my screen so that is one of the basic requirements so what your application logic now this uh, code might re also require some uh, script arguments right any inputs that you want to give to the script so for example here we are giving an input of an s3 location where actually uh, the argument we are passing to the script so i'm giving uh, 
first relocation as an uh, argument. So that is for the output where the uh, job output will be stored basically so you can basically provide this so whatever your script demands as an argument that you can put forward here in the square bracket format as you can see so there are various uh, i would like you to explore more so there are various other properties that you can budge in or can change with regards to job with regards to spark configurations as well so as soon as you submit the job you see the status comes into the pending state so now it's the job is running the job is submitted and uh, basically this is how simple it is to so basically submit a job from console so now coming to the cli part so uh, similarly we noted down the application id so all the uh, things that were required in console similarly we will be using in cli as an input to the uh, cli command that we'll be using so for example here i uh, we have created an environment variable as such just ease of use to the cli command so we can have the job role the execution role that is one of the important part and then we will have the s3 bucket that we mentioned as a script argument where we want to store the output of our job or the uh, like basically the word count in this uh, in this example and uh, uh, the next part is the application id that i mentioned where we have to submit the job so basically now here these three things are more important and now you will come here as such uh, when uh, you will have to basically um, you will see that uh, what command is basically used here so start job run is basically the command that you will be using to submit the job and uh, it's it's very simple i believe there is uh, we will give you the links and everything as well so it's very simple as such to um, submit a job so application id as you see is important the execution role and just the uh, name of the job is required and after that you will have to provide the uh, entry point for example the uh, uh, the application code that we mentioned right for example here the python file is the application that is going to be executed so it will be in the s3 location that we can specify so similarly we can uh, like submit the job via cli as well so you will get a job run id and you will also basically get an ern as such for that job run id and here you can see as i refresh the page you will see two jobs now the one with cli and the one with the uh, console that we basically submitted so this is uh, what we wanted to mention as such like how super simple it is to work with emr serverless and how we can basically move forward uh, like to adopt emr serverless um uh, by, by any chance any questions or something uh, uh, are there if we want to answer or we can move forward um yeah uh, thank you so much sir firstly uh, for the demo that was really insightful but uh, since we have uh, you know we are approaching towards the end of the show um, yeah, okay the time is about to be uh, oh. you know, completed, so no i just maybe conclude uh, so i hope that's fine no problem at all so just uh, just to give a next step for the viewers as such or the ones who will be watching this or who are uh, so basically uh, just wanted to give these links so the first link i would say would give you how to uh, go process by process as such to adopt emr for starting a job submitting a job how you can orchestrate your jobs using a like step functions or airflow as all this stuff as well so that is also there in the workshop so from our end I, we would suggest or recommend if you can try it out so you can get to know how to use emr in that yeah uh so that is we can end as such uh asad such uh, harsh uh, everyone uh, today we looked at uh, reducing costs with EMR serverless design patterns um, and we hope that you found it useful. If there are questions that were not answered today, you can post your questions on repost.ews where one of us experts can provide you with an answer or your question could become a topic of one of our future shows. If you have feedback for us, check the chat box on the right for your link to our survey or you can also email us at awssupportsyou at amazon.com. We want to hear from you. So please tell us what else you would like to see on this show. Also note uh, that there will be no new episode of AWS Supports You next week. But please do check out twitch.tv slash AWS throughout the week to see presentations live from reInvent in Las Vegas. We will be back in two weeks on Wednesday, December 7th at 10 a.m. IST to talk about securing EKS clusters using Bottle Rocket. Thanks for joining us at AWS Supports You. Happy cloud computing.